Hi everyone, I'm Hannah and you are welcome to my allotment. As a reference, I'm based outside Oxford, UK and here we have oceanic temperate climate with cool summers and mild winters and my last frost date is mid-May. So I hope you're ready for another installment of the allotment year. So we're now in week 13 and we're really coming into spring now. The jobs are mounting and it's all about keeping that momentum going and getting as many, many jobs as you can done as possible. You will never get them all done, but it's okay. We're on the same situation. We'll get there in the end. The seedlings will survive, the seeds will be sown and you will have a harvest in the end. Let's keep the faith and keep swimming. Yeah, keep swimming. That's what I keep telling myself. So let's get it done. It's Saturday late, late afternoon. I guess it's early evening, really. And uh, I've had a busy day on the plot. I got, I, um, after last week's vlog fiasco, I decided to really like make a list and then try my hardest to stick to it. So, so in today's part of the vlog, I have done four things. <laughs> and these are all quite important spring jobs to do for this time in March. First of all, I had to move all my seedlings and everything into the new greenhouse where I am and now, as you can see, they're all here. Uh, because, you know, I need to actually harvest and water the stuff that's in the little greenhouse. I have a lot of lettuces and other things in there that I just have not been able to harvest because of all the seedlings that have been in the way. So that was like job number one, so I can actually eat some of the lettuce that I have growing. So that's <laughs> it's really important. And to be able to do that, I had to like get all the staging from all over the plot and get it up uh, <laughs> where it is now so that was a bit took a bit of doing but it's done now and i think the seedlings will be happier in here i'm happier they're in here anyway so i gave them a water as well so yeah hopefully they'll be all right so <laughs> because i was moving the seedlings in here i really really had to put in the automatic openers for the windows here so there's two windows in this one and I already have an automatic opener in my little greenhouse and it is crucial, especially in spring when on a sunny day it can get into the high 30s pretty quickly even though it's cold outside. So yeah, if you're not here to open the door, you definitely need the automatic opener. So they're in, they were a bit tricky, they always are a bit tricky, but they're in now. I just need to check on a warmer day, it's been overcast all day, whether um, they open the the way I want them to. So the automatic opener is pretty cool. It opens through hydraulics where the liquid inside the piston expands and contracts depending on the temperature inside the greenhouse. So when it's hot, the liquid expands and it pushes the arm of the opener up and the window opens. And then when it's cold again, it, it contracts and the piston contracts in, it closes the window with it. So it is very, very good thing to have. And then I realized how dirty the glass was on the greenhouse. So I also cleaned it. Um, that wasn't on the to-do list, but I, yeah, I realized now is the time be before it's even more full of seedlings. So that's done. And uh, I didn't do a great job, but it's good enough. And there's still like residue from the previous owner on the glass and all that sort of stuff, but you know, it, the seedlings don't really care, so it's all right. I don't want to. I don't want to risk breaking any more of the glass by being too forceful with the cleaning. I might go over if I can find my little knife. I might go over and try to scrape it off. Those little bits of residue left on won't affect the amount of light that gets in here, and that's all that matters really. It might not look great, but it's not a beauty contest, is it? Or is it? <laughs> The final thing I did today was I planted my first early potatoes. This year I'm going for Swift. Maybe not the best in flavor, but they're pretty quick, hence the name, at forming those little round golden nuggets that I would preferably want early summer. So I planted them both in one of my beds and also in an old truck that was um, broken in the bottom, cracked in the bottom, and I made a few more drainage holes. So last year, my first earlies didn't do very well, and that was mainly 
I believe now after having analyzed a little bit the late frost we had we had three nights of hard frost in mid-may which isn't unusual but it was enough to set the first earlies back I did cover them with fleas and with newspaper but enough of the foliage on the first earlies were affected so that they just never recovered and after reading a bit more about it specifically the first earlies are more sensitive than not uh, than the main crop or second earlies to late frost so the way to get around that is to plant in containers or bags that you can easily move into a greenhouse or a protected area if you predicted frost so to hedge my bets a bit i've planted some in a truck and i can potentially it will be a bit tricky because it's cracked in the bottom but i can potentially move it into the greenhouse if needs be so i grow my potatoes the no dig way obviously because i have a no dig plot so the no dig way is very very simple you just dig a little hole where the potato is going to go in you plonk it in and then you cover it up so far so very similar however when the first leaves come up you don't earth them up this is where a dug plot has a benefit over the no dig and this is because if you earth up your potatoes and you manage to cover all the new emerging leaves before a frost they will be protected right but there are so many positives or benefits to growing no dig potatoes in my mind that this is my preferred method still so what i like about it is the ease of harvesting you basically just pull the plant and all the potatoes come up they are not deep at all they grow in the surface layer i can insert some footage of a harvest here uh, and it's very very simple to get them out and they come out clean so they're growing in the surface mulch and they send down their little roots into the bottom right it, it, below that right so they still get a lot of nutrients and it still uh, can pr produce an equal size harvest but then you might wonder how do you avoid the potatoes going green well you have to keep an eye out so as soon as you see them swelling and pushing the compost or the soil up you, you you arrive, you get there quick with a, a small pot of compost and you just plonk it on top and that's enough to keep them covered. As long as none of the skin of the potato is, is out in the sun, they'll be protected. So as a recap for myself, what jobs did I get done today? Yes, I fitted the automatic openers in the new greenhouse. I cleaned the new greenhouse, the, the, the glass, I mean, and I moved the staging and all the seedlings into the new greenhouse, which means oh, I can access my old little greenhouse. It's so exciting. I can actually harvest some lettuce for tonight's meal. <laughs> uh, and I also planted my first earlies. Whee! We're getting there. We're getting there. I am now exhausted. I, oh, again, <laughs> but that's part of it, isn't it? That's part of why I keep my allotment. It is my exercise while not doing exercise. So I'm enjoying it and that's the best way to exercise in my opinion without realizing you're doing it. <laughs> but yes, I'm gonna go inside now after I harvest some lettuce, I hope. And uh, yeah, wash my hands, always dirty, and spend some time with my little kid. If you've watched any of my recent videos lately, you might know I've set up an Amazon affiliate shop and I'll insert links in the description for, for example, the staging I'm using for the automatic window openers. I've also put in my thermometer for the new greenhouse and you can find all that down below. Woo, a well, windy day. It's Sunday and it's been high winds all day. So I've mainly been hiding inside the new greenhouse it's so lovely so I needed to sow my melons because it's the end of March and it is a good time to start first thing I had to do was to get my really old inherited falling apart potting bench <laughs> into my greenhouse so I found that on the plot when I came here and I don't know how long it'd been outside abandoned and every year I have to sort of piece it together again and I can see that it definitely is in need of a few new screws. 
so I need to do that. So I think originally it was stapled together and the staples are failing now, so it definitely needs to be upgraded to screws. But yes, I've, I managed to put that inside and I've sort of propped it up with a with a, a, a tub of um, fertilizer, uh, which I bought for my um, squash last year when they weren't doing very well. I don't know if it did any different. Anyway, I have it. It's heavy and it works. So I start my melons now and not before because of the speed that they grow at. So they're part of the same family as squash and uh, courgettes and cucumbers and I don't start those until maybe late April or early May because they grow huge so fast and I do not have a safe place to keep them so they are very sensitive to frost so they wouldn't survive in the greenhouse if a really bad frost hit or you know I would have to have a heated greenhouse or use a greenhouse heater I don't have that set up so it's better to wait and they will catch up. They, there's no, there's no need to sow them this early. That's one, of, one of the things I get most asked. You know, what do I do with my courgettes that I sowed in February? It's like, well, <laughs> bin them and start again <laughs> because it's just, yeah, they're just gonna be leggy and huge and yeah, just give you lots and lots of trouble. Anyway, melons. So I have not managed to grow a single melon, and I really, really, really want one. So this is now my fourth year trying, I think it is, yeah. So really, this is now, <laughs> this is do or die. And I, I've upgraded, I now have six varieties. They all claim to be early and suitable for the UK climate. And I will get a melon. So I've, I have several issues with them. Uh, I think partly, and quite a lot of them, I have overwatered. So I. I'm, I'm aware that overwatering is an issue in this family, right? But I still manage to grow cucumbers and squash and everything, so I don't know why I, I find it so hard with melons. Maybe because they're just more sensitive to it. So this year I'm doing it slightly differently. I'm growing them in pots inside the greenhouse, but the pots will have no bottom. So their roots can will be able to go down into the beds, but the, uh, the main plant will sit in the pot meaning that when you water it drains away it, it won't sit in water so that's i think that will help me not overwater them so i do have all the right conditions for potentially growing successfully melons in the uk you know i have a good greenhouse and all that and it, it does get fairly warm in oxford in summers maybe not last summer but usually there's heat waves and droughts and all sorts so so it should be possible to grow them here and I will succeed every year uh, when I see them fail I'm like never again but then come spring I'm like ooh, let's grow melons again anyway so yeah I'm growing six varieties and the one I'm maybe most excited about is a watermelon and I know that one's really tricky to grow so we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see so I have bought some clear plastic like um, polytunnel type plastic so I am gonna trial, if I have the space, I'm gonna trial growing them outside as well in like a makeshift polytunnel. It won't be like a huge one, it'll just be like a low one and they'll be growing along the ground, just uh, like ground cover. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll trial that if I have the space, as I said, because uh, it's filling up fairly quickly now. But yes, melons, please, please melons this year. <laughs> I also sowed my second sowing for this year of herbs, so dill, parsley, coriander, and then again my second sowing of radishes. So this is sort of the succession sowing that I do, because coriander specifically, and dill as well, they go to seed super quick. Parsley, less so, but I know that the coriander that you grow in spring it's just oh it just bolts super quick so it's good to get the the succession sowings in and again i multi sow them um but it works very well with the with the herbs so the other day when i picked up my kid from nursery i got handed like a bag of cotton balls and beans that were sprouting like just 
brownish beans and told me and they told me like oh you can take them home and plant them up it's it's an activity we've been doing and they had apparently done like a comparison between growing them in soil and growing them in cotton and of course the ones grown in cotton uh, did much better and that is because the, the soil they use or compost they use was probably too um, compact and fine whilst the cotton wool will supply air pockets which is great for uh, for root formation right so anyway um, I have potted them up in really shallow tray and we'll see I mean I have no idea what variety it is maybe it's kidney beans or something like that it's way too early to sow beans and um, yeah but I'm just keeping them in greenhouse if they survive they survive if they don't I mean that's all right I mean I have no idea if they're dwarf or if they're gonna be like super tall <laughs> climbing ones uh, yeah we'll but we'll see yeah but uh, otherwise it's I've had the allotment helpers here today and while I've been hiding in the greenhouse they've been like digging up these diseased saplings I have on the part of the plot so these were covering the whole plot when I took it over and um, was one of the first jobs I did was to dig them all up roots and all and I don't know what kind of disease it is it's like um, it, some sort of spongy growth appear on the branches and the stems so the trees come up well and they set leaf the first year and then this stuff appears and all the leaves fall off and then it sort of just slowly kills it. So if you cut it down, so some people have cut, the, cut them down at the uh, ground and the new shoots come up and they will get the disease as well. So there's no saving it and I, I just have no idea what it is. So it affects some of the trees and not all of them. So it doesn't affect the sycamore and it doesn't affect the elder and some other bits and bobs that we have here in the hedge. So I really don't know what it is, but I've never seen it before, but it's very, it's, it's rampant around here and it's, it's quite depressing really. So I don't know if I, so I don't know if I told you, why can I never remember if I did? But I got a massive clump of uh, a dahlia crown or dahlia plants that my plot neighbor dug up for me and um, it was basically because he never digs them up right he just leaves them in the ground it's a big white cactus type every year it's very beautiful and I, I just said oh if I he offered some for me and I was like all right fine he just like split it with his spade and because it had been growing like that it was just like intertwined and I've sp I just spent some time just trying to detangle them and get the good tubers out because a lot of them obviously split when he did when he did that and a lot of them were rotting and whatnot because I guess they always do every year so anyway I've divided them up and like I'd say 80% was rotting and um, yeah so the other ones I've just divided up and potted up here in this uh, tray lined with some paper and um, I'll see if they sprout so it's just the right time now to start doing this with your dahlias and um, yeah it, I mean they are predicting snow at the end of next week but still seven degrees as the lowest so I'm a bit doubtful I think we're just gonna get rain here but yes yeah, so I've done that if it's gonna be super frosty I might just bring them inside but we'll see if any of them shoot and if all of them shoot then I'll have loads of white dahlias <laughs> which isn't maybe my favorite I also have lots and lots of dahlias that I ordered this year which is for my dahlia bed, which I still haven't decided on where I'm going to put. <laughs> I have a lot of open space on my plot and I want to just think about the best way to position them. So I want it to be really effectful and welcoming when you get to the plot. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think of the best way to do that. At first I was thinking I was going to have it in front of the greenhouse here, but I'm thinking because the greenhouse is sunk, and some of these dahlias are really tall. They're gonna give too much shade, I think. So that's probably a bad idea. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> and it's nice to have the evening sun in the greenhouse here. But otherwise, <laughs> so the peas are doing really well in the greenhouse here. So everyone's so worried about peas being cold sensitive. They're not at all. Um, look at that, this, that's the sugar snap. That's the, the purple podded. 
this one, this really tall one. This is a um, uh, Rosa Corona, it's a semi dwarf, so it's a lot shorter. But oh my god, they need to go out, like they're super quick. They were shown 9th of March, right? Ooh. And uh, some, something else that needs to go out. So these are my Autumn Sewn Sweet Peas. So they are now starting to flop and they're starting to cling to each other and they really need to go. So this is color mix. It's just a pinky white mix of pastels. And I've already cut them back. I cut them back in midwinter. I could do it again and get even more plants. So that's one option or I can plant them out. So Sweet peas, because they're overwintered and they've been in the greenhouse, right, during that really cold weather we had when it went down to minus 6.7 in the greenhouse, no fleas, no nothing, and they are fine. So they should be fine if I plant them out. They might need wind protection, so if it's going to be windy like it's been today, then I would have fleas over them, or if it's going to be snow or something like that, you know, uh, if that comes true, then I would maybe cover them. But I still haven't decided whether I should take cuttings and let them grow back or whether I should just take the plunge. So, yeah. I mean, it is tempting to get more, but I have also sown more. So, you know, how many sweet peas do you need? <laughs> they are beautiful though, aren't they? So, we'll see. Little tendrils. Ooh. Can you see that? Well, it's just focusing on me, isn't it? There it is. Anyway. Oh, this is just a jungle. I did spot today that the blueberries that I planted last year are really putting on leaf growth now. It's really exciting. I wonder if I'm going to get much fruit this year. We'll see. I still have to mulch them with some ericaceous compost, uh, which I have anyway already, so I should just do it. Exciting! Oh, and I forgot to say, the, the flower seeds I sowed last log so this is on the 23rd of March, and now today is the 28th of March, so five days later. So we have um, the calendula is up, and the forget-me-nots are up, and uh, the marigolds are up. But I'm still waiting for the black-eyed Susans and the lobelia. So we'll see, we'll see if they come up. And um, I have uh, some flowers I need to prick out here. So I'm so not used to growing flowers, right? So it's uh, it's a bit tricky, but I'm thinking, even though they're absolutely tiny, some of them, it definitely is time, so I, I need to do that. It's mixed snapdragons, clary sage, mixed cosmos, and things like that. So some of my cosmos, just one of the cupcake, cupcake cosmos uh, germinated fine, but the sensations mixed, only one has appeared, and it's looking a bit uh, weird, so <laughs> Obviously then I went online and bought like eight more packets of gorgeous Cosmos. <laughs> so they're in the post on their way, so that's exciting. I'm gonna really go big on flowers this year. I mean, I've already said that I think uh, in my what flower seeds I'm sowing this year video, but yeah, definitely gonna max out on the flowers and it's gonna be beautiful, beautiful. I think the stuff I need to do, the rest of the stuff I need to do this week is plant out Oh, I, the broad beans. So these are the spring sown ones. Some of them are taller than others, but they're definitely ready. They're definitely ready. And um, the sooner I get them out of these pots, the better. So a lot of people talk about beans and peas and other legumes that they don't like root disturbance and that you should use root trainers and all this sort of stuff. Whilst obviously they would prefer no disturbance, they would prefer root trainers. It doesn't mean that you can't grow them if you don't have these or if you're if all your direct sown get eaten by mice or whatever. It, you know, it's fine. So I grow peas in quite <laughs> quite shallow tr uh, trays and they're fine. Uh, I usually grow beans in these, so they're like maybe seven, eight centimeter deep and they're fine. Obviously you can see the roots curling here but as long as you don't leave them in the trays too long and you can plant these out these small ones even they will be fine 
just plant them out and it's fine. You do, you do not have to invest in fancy equipment or whatnot, unless you really, really want to, of course. And that thing about them not liking their roots disturbed, I mean, is that even true? <laughs> like, because I disturb mine a lot because I grow them in modules and then I plant them out. So, and I have great success growing these type of uh, vegetables, so I don't even know if it's true, right? And there's a lot of, a lot of myths. A lot of myths in gardening, partly designed to make it appear more difficult or maybe they were invented back when there was lots and lots more workforce involved like for example washing pots there's an idea that you have to wash your pots and trays it's not true just use them just reuse them <laughs> like this, this don't waste your time washing pots so that is like a leftover thing because young journeymen in the big big gardens they needed a winter job because there was less to do so this job was invented where they needed to wash and organize the pots question everything you're told and try it for yourself and experiment and learn from doing and have fun you know have fun obviously everyone in the gardening community love to give advice me included and <laughs> it's just important to bear in mind that everyone's growing conditions are slightly different what works for some doesn't work for others and there's more than one way of doing things and especially now in spring you see a lot of people starting all kinds of seeds and it's all really exciting and there's a big dose of FOMO or fear of missing out but depending on what growing setup you have you have to adapt your sowing methods after that basically and Nothing teaches you more than, than uh, sowing your courgettes in February and then being strangled by a massive seedling come April. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Enough preaching. So I'm, I'm uh, sort of uh, quite busy this week again with work, so we'll see how much time I get to spend on the plot. Obviously now there are the, the evenings are lighter and it's gonna be super warm early this week and then potentially slow by Friday so we'll see but it's, I think it's gonna be 20 degrees on Tuesday so I'm definitely gonna try to get out on the plot if not at lunchtime then at least after work and um, definitely check on the automatic openers in here because yeah that's a good time to see if they work properly. I'm gonna carry all my seed trays inside now, the melons and the herbs, and uh, let them germinate inside as per usual. So I'll see you when I see you, I guess. So that's the end of this week's vlog. It's been a little bit all over the place this week with the weather, and I haven't managed to film as much as I wanted to in the sunshine, but um, I did upload my What I'm Sewing in April video, and I'm gonna link that here? No, here. <laughs> so check that out. Otherwise, yeah, it's been a good week on the plot. I got quite a lot of stuff planted out and that always feels good. It feels good to clear the greenhouse a little bit. But yes, thank you very much for watching this far if you're still with me. And if you're new here, consider subscribing because it all really helps. So I hope to see you next Friday for the next vlog. Have a great weekend and happy Easter. Get a lot of gardening done. I know I will come snow or whatever. <laughs> I will get to the plot. Have a good one. I'll see you soon.